This is the coolest cooler, the biggest Kickstarter failure of all time. At the height of its popularity, the Coolest Cooler's creator, Ryan Grepper, was lauded as a visionary who'd changed the icebox market forever. That's because he added features like a blender, stereo system, USB ports, and much, much more. He even managed to get the odd celebrity endorsement to hype up the Kickstarter page. Hey, Bill Nye here, looking at Kickstarter. The Coolest Cooler, I mean, who doesn't like that? See, it's not only cool, it cools. Get it? Huh? But with the high cost of backing the project, constant production setbacks, and overall poor communication from the company, the coolest cooler was dead on arrival within a short five years. In the end, the crowdfunding campaign raised a whopping $13.2 million, but somehow failed to deliver a full third of the promised coolers to backers. And the ones that did go out were considered underwhelming. So what exactly happened with the coolest cooler? Was it a genuine attempt at making a revolutionary product? or just another get-rich-quick scheme thought up by some dude on the beach. First, let's get to know the developer, Ryan Grepper. He's an entrepreneur from Helena, Montana, who earned his Bachelor of Science while also pursuing studies in international business in 1998. Ryan says he worked in medical sales for a while, but that career just didn't click with him, leading to a part-time job at Sears while living in San Diego. In the meantime, he did custom welding work on the side to keep a roof over his head. Ryan's LinkedIn bio refers to himself in the third person, writing, quote, Ryan Grepper is part visionary, part mad scientist, and a passionate entrepreneur. Photos on the web from as far back as 2003 show Ryan promoting his so-called shotapult at a 4th of July gathering. He later told the Washington Post the shotapult was designed to get around San Diego's public consumption laws on the boardwalk, and that it had gotten him an invitation to the Playboy Mansion. Ryan says he designed the earliest iteration of the coolest cooler idea in the mid-2000s on a whim as a way to entertain his friends. He built it by cobbling together some old speakers in a blender and powering them with the motor from a weed whacker. But this idea was soon shelved to pursue other entrepreneurial ventures. Ryan then tried building a name for himself by launching Inventor's Blueprint, a web series meant to educate others on the invention process and what to expect with it. He posted a handful of videos to YouTube, each one chock full of well-meaning platitudes about perseverance and what not to do. Someday is a disease that will take your dreams to the grave with you. Most interestingly, his video on creating a viable prototype clarified some of Ryan's beliefs about crowdfunded money. Most notably, the notion that the cash came no strings attached. Crowdfunding is really a novel way to reach out and help develop your invention or your idea by leveraging a network of strangers to help fund your project. They're not giving you a loan. They're not taking equity in your company. They're not investing. It's basically money that never has to be paid back. Years later, this video was quietly deleted from the channel after Ryan was called out at the height of the Coolest Cooler debacle. The series soon transitioned into marketing courses on how to pitch your own products. Around the same time, Ryan operated an inventor's consultation service called Arc Innovation, where he'd act as a middleman putting companies in touch with inventors by screening out different concepts. In time, he shifted towards showing off his own ideas, like the Aqua Bowl, a foldable cardboard dog bowl you could take with you on the go. None of his ideas took off the way he'd hoped, though. So in 2013, Ryan took to crowdfunding for his most ambitious project to date, The Coolest Cooler. The original Kickstarter campaign for The Coolest Cooler was launched in November 2013. This first attempt fell short of the $125,000 goal, earning only about 80% of that figure. As per Kickstarter's rules about meeting the full amount by the deadline, all pledges were refunded and Ryan got nothing. Not willing to give up so easily, Ryan went back to the drawing board and began hashing out an improved prototype with many new features. He fired up a new Kickstarter campaign for the Coolest Cooler in July 2014. Videos of the new prototype showed a clean, professional look that titillated viewers with all the bells and whistles including the blender, Bluetooth speakers, a bottle opener, LED lights, and much more. Unlike the first time around, this next crowdfunding campaign was a roaring success. The Coolest Cooler Kickstarter met its goal within 36 hours, raising a total of over $13.2 million during its entire run. News outlets like CNBC lauded the innovation and persistence of Ryan, and for his success he was offered a consultation role on CNBC's Tech Crowd Council. Tech websites and news outlets alike heralded him as the Steve Jobs of the cooler world. The newfound success of the second campaign was attributed to a much more attractive product as well as the more obvious timing of campaigning in the summer rather than the fall. 
It probably also helped that Ryan lowered the funding threshold from $125,000 to just $50,000. It now seemed all but certain that the coolest cooler would finally get made. Over the next few weeks, Ryan encouraged feedback and showed off new updates on Kickstarter, including a poll where backers could decide the colors the coolest cooler would come in. He continued devising new ideas for how to improve his product, including the concept of putting two coolest coolers together to create a DJ mixing station. By August, the product pitch had officially become the number one Kickstarter campaign in the site's history. The coolest cooler was to retail for $299, though pledges of over $185 gave backers a $100 rebate and priority access to the first batch to be completed. CNBC wrote that the target release date was to be February 2015, and Ryan was confident there would be no holdups or delays because he had planned out the supply chain logistics ahead of time. Tech journalists at The Verge continued to praise Ryan for his tenacity, writing, quote, This project will be picked apart as a Kickstarter case study for years to come. Of course, they were right about this, but for all the wrong reasons. It seems the hullabaloo pumping the coolest cooler as the most successful Kickstarter campaign in the site's history left many blind to what could be happening behind the scenes. But not everybody was completely on board. A blog called Kicksucker, which critically analyzes crowdfunding campaigns, noted the promising nature of the coolest cooler, but had some reservations about Ryan's own history. The webmaster noted that Ryan had no provable track record of previous successes, considering most of his older inventions to be duds. On the website, Kicksucker's operator asked Ryan three questions about the viability of delivering the product on time. One of these questions was about Ryan being sued for patent infringement years prior. This was soon followed up in another post from Kicksucker, titled, Would You Give This Guy $10 Million? A luggage weighing tool Ryan had touted as a brand new idea in one of his inventor's blueprint videos was accused of being ripped off from a fellow inventor named Ronald Kritzler. Ryan was in fact the defendant in a case labeled EFAM Trips Inc. vs. Grepper and all, filed in September 2009. He soon launched a countersuit. The case was eventually dismissed with prejudice in 2010. Apparently the party settled, but in whose favor remains a mystery. Ronald, however, told us his patent will remain active until at least 2028. With the coolest coolers deadline met and only months to go before the first shipments went out the door, Ryan had his work cut out for him. A few weeks after the Kickstarter ended, Ryan announced who would help manufacture the product. He had decided to go with a Chinese manufacturer owing to time constraints, which was met with negative feedback from some backers. By November, Ryan acknowledged that coordinating such a large project was, quote, challenging but remained optimistic he could over-deliver ahead of schedule. He promised that teams of experts were working around the clock to get the coolest cooler out. By December 2014, though, Ryan had published a lengthy update to the Kickstarter campaign, leading off with a list of even more features he had hoped to include in the final product, mostly upgrades of the original tech touted as at no additional cost. Then came the disappointing part. Ryan told backers these upgrades would cause the product to be delayed from the February 2015 launch to later that summer, likely in July. While some supporters understood this to be the nature of crowdfunding, others were annoyed by the inconvenience of the delay, especially for upgrades they didn't ask for, and which by all rights should have been included in the original plans from the beginning. Summer 2015 came and went. A few thousand had received their promised coolers, but many more were left waiting. Ryan acknowledged the deluge of angry emails his team received in an August update, but his response was somewhat dismissive. By November 2015, Ryan had taken to Amazon to sell coolest coolers for $499 each, despite still not having met obligations to backers. He argued that this was necessary to keep the company afloat. Instead, Ryan's new hope was to have the last of the crowdfunded bunch out by April 2016. Supporters were understandably livid. Ryan had yet to fulfill the promises he originally made, but went ahead and started pitching his product elsewhere. One-star reviews flooded the product page. Ryan blamed delays on the fact that the blender's motors were insufficient for their standards, but that they were also stymied by a strike preventing them from sourcing superior motors. On his website, Ryan explained he had no choice but to launch the coolers on Amazon given production obligations he made before the manufacturing issues came up. In other words, he had every intention of making good on his corporate deals ahead of getting the product out to those who supported him from the very beginning. Comments from angry backers decried this, reminding Ryan who got him there in the first place. But despite demands for refunds pouring in, this was for now but an impotent rage. With little that could be done, many coolest cooler supporters would just have to wait and see if they'd ever get their product. The company was in bigger trouble come early 2016. 
First, Ryan put out a letter to backers letting them know in his usual flowery way that he appreciated all their support, but had hit yet another snag in production. He explained that all the upgrades he had planned for with the initial delay had run up costs far more than anticipated, and that the business was losing money hand over fist. Ryan then promised he would host a live hangout on YouTube in early March to address concerns. On this live stream, Ryan admitted to supporters that production had all but stopped. He explained that his company needed $15 million more in funding, over double what had originally been sourced, to cover the costs of shipping out the remaining 36,000 coolers and plow ahead with more production. Whenever there's a challenge with this campaign, we have people jump on social media, saying this is a scam, uh, telling everybody that uh, is still waiting on their coolers that they'll never get it, and it's, it's really... I don't know a better way to say it, but it's really frustrating and disheartening for all of us. Uh, because in that window of time, between the end of July, when we started producing, and about the middle or so of October, maybe the very beginning of November, when the motor strike shut us down, in that window of time, we made and have shipped about 20,000 units to our backers. And that is not insignificant. That's a pretty big number when you look at the logistics behind that. Now we still have around 36,000 remaining orders from pledges that we still have to fulfill. But it's also very important to remember that for those 36,000 units, we have made down payments or uh, even partial payments for all of those. And so that's part of the process that with this additional funding round will help us move forward more quickly to get the rest of these made. In fact, for most of these, we even have uh, inventory on hand that will let us go uh, even, even more quickly. But that's where we sit right now as far as coolest. Ryan made an offer that by contributing more money, customers could guarantee an arrival date for their cooler by the 4th of July. Public reaction was swift and overwhelmingly negative. Some pledgers called for Ryan to be brought up on federal charges for theft owing to the postage payments not being reimbursed. Combined with the fact that the coolest cooler could be bought retail and shipped almost immediately, Ryan's reputation as an entrepreneur was tarnished. Ignoring the increasingly angry comments left on the Kickstarter page, Ryan continued making yet more promises that would never be kept. In the meantime, rumors began swirling that he had spent the cash giving his family members cushy jobs and that he had even bought himself a Porsche. The most obvious question was where the original funding really went and Ryan claimed it was burnt through trying to make the coolers better. Making matters worse was that the coolest cooler had dropped to just $199 on Amazon, far less than what some initial backers paid years earlier. With this, even the media had now soured on Ryan and his product, having previously proclaimed the coolest cooler as the greatest thing since sliced bread. Forbes declared it a Kickstarter failure, painting it as a cautionary tale of pledging money to startups. 315 complaints were filed with the Department of Justice in Oregon over the excessive shipping times that September, leading to an investigation of Ryan Grepper and his company. The CEO declined to comment at the time, and from October 2016 onward, the last few updates on the Kickstarter were paywalled to backers only. It was almost a year and a half before the findings of the investigation were made public. Ryan returned with an update in June 2017, talking at length about the matter. He assured that all was well and that the DOJ's investigation was vindicating, writing, quote, As part of the agreement with the DOJ, we have a time frame of three years to ship all remaining backers their coolest rewards. If we don't succeed, we have to provide a settlement for any remaining backers. Ryan went on to blame the disgruntled supporters who filed the complaints for delaying the product even further, dismissing claims that the Kickstarter was a sleazy grift as, quote, conspiracy theories and characterizing its detractors as whiners. He speculated it would take another $4.7 million to finish and ship the 20,000 units that remained outstanding, all within that three-year time frame. Ryan closed with a promise to keep his backers updated in the next quarter. This never happened. The last update to the Kickstarter was made on March 12th, 2018. What followed was more than a year and a half of virtual radio silence from Ryan Grepper and his team. It was clear that the entrepreneur still had the coolest cooler on his brain in that time period, though. A patent filed by Ryan was dated for September 2019 over a cooler with an integrated blender and accessories. It seems that even if Ryan couldn't get his product to market, he had no intention of sitting around letting someone else do it either. 
In early December 2019, the company launched a sale on their website, offering discounts of up to 60% on all products. Yet again, pledgers were outraged that the coolest was still being sold and shipped through their shop, while some of the earliest pledgers were still going without. The rumor was that this was a last-ditch attempt to recoup funds to pay back the company's debtors, and before long, this was all but confirmed. The Coolest Cooler Company officially shuttered the project by way of announcement on December 7, 2019. Ryan shifted the blame to excessive tariffs placed on Chinese-made goods, calling it a quote, insurmountable challenge to complete and ship the remaining coolers. Kickstarter washed their hands of the affair in a press release, absolving themselves of any responsibility, though up until that point the cooler was still listed on their Products We Love page. The only compensation offered from the Coolest Cooler team was a measly $20 to those who had never received the icebox, barely 10% of what most people had originally pledged. Infuriated backers were insulted, criticizing Ryan's inept skills as a businessman. Unsurprisingly, he refused to comment on the matter to the media. As of December 2020, over 20,000 backers of the Coolest Cooler were still without anything to show for it, with 13,530 not even getting their 20 bucks. Even as late as summer 2023, furious backers could be found on the original Kickstarter's comments section demanding refunds. Those who did get their coolers were mostly unimpressed, criticizing their lack of longevity and comparatively cheap construction despite the high cost of pledging. Some vented their frustrations at Kickstarter itself, which had made at least $321,000 from backers who didn't get their coolers. Ryan maintained that he was disappointed by how everything went down, but stopped short of assuming full responsibility for the utter failure of a campaign. Whether the disappearance of the millions of dollars pledge was a calculated move or the product of shoddy management was irrelevant to onlookers. And as such, the coolest cooler has gone down as the biggest crowdfunding blunder on Kickstarter's platform. It's interesting to see how the media that was all too eager to prop up Ryan and his coolest cooler turned on him just as fast when everything went south. Overall, however, this ordeal demonstrates how easy it is for entrepreneurs to find themselves way over their head thanks to the goodwill of supporters, especially if they're the type that see meeting crowdfunding goals as an end rather than a means. Regular cooler tires are flimsy and sink right into the sand. We designed the coolest wheels to be twice as wide to roll twice as easily. The wheels do not roll across the sand. This does not work. Um, there's just not enough gap there, so you end up dragging it, and the sand basically was uh, probably right up to here. So you're, the wheels didn't do anything for the sand. If it's hard sand going across pavement, that's fine, but I just drug it right across the sand. There was no choice.